Hello friends, do you want to learn how to look at markets in a different way? Actually, uh, this was a popular method a few decades ago before fast computers and great looking charts. I'm talking about uh, market profile charts uh, and it still holds a lot of punch even today. Um, so uh, let's build our own market profile generator in less than 30 lines of Python. So welcome to the Valamel Show. My name is Manuel Amunategui. This talk is going to be filed on Valamel.com. You go to channels and finance and you'll find all my videos on finance. Uh, some have source code, some don't. This one will have source code and the link is in the description of the video. Uh, also sign up for my newsletter. It's right here in the middle of the page. And you know, uh, please give some thumbs up to this video, right? So uh, it's always good to know that people are enjoying the material, learning from it. So, you know, kind of encourage me to ma make more of these. So, um, Let's look at charting the markets using market profile charts. The best way to, to, to kind of look at this is to look at the end product. This is it. So it's a very old, very different way of looking at the markets, a very old school way. Uh, a little background, it was developed in the late 50s by J.P. Stettelmeyer. He was a pit trader at the Chicago Board of Trade, CBOT, and he designed this approach to kind of get an edge over uh, other, uh, you, you know, people using, you know, either price action, raw price action, or using regular line line charts. And he definitely it definitely works. I'm going to remove the header so we can see this a little bit better. Um, so like a normal chart, it uses a, uh, the y-axis, right? The, horse, uh, the vertical axis with a price, just like a normal, normal chart was. What changes is there is no uh, x price axis. So it, there is one, but it's a bit different. Uh, this is a monthly chart of the S&P 500. So there is kind of a, 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 a time base. Every, every kind of column is a month. But within that column, there is something going on here, as you can see. This is November 2018. And you see uh, there is a lettering system. And uh, it's actually a character-based system, and it's hierarchical. It starts with A, B, C, in the capitals, and then if it needs more characters, it'll start using special characters, and it'll use lowercase, whatever it needs. But as you can see, the first trading day of November 2018 was the A period. So you can see the price went from 2700 all the way up to 2750 it looks like, right? So there's, there's a few A's, a part of the price action. And then it went to the B's. The B's, it was started here. Uh, it went, and you can see BB here. Then C, C starts exploring up. Uh, D, where is D? I can't see D. D is, where are you, D? A, B, C, D. D is right here. So it's exploring up in the price, right? So it's going up. It's looking for buyers. It finds no buyers. So it goes D, then it goes E, it comes back F, G, and it starts exploring below. Lo and behold, at the end of the month of November, you start getting this beautiful distribution, all right? So that's why statisticians love market profiles because it makes statistical sense. Here you clearly see uh, where, you know, uh, where they were exploring to find sellers and they, they, they didn't find any. Basically, the last selling action was right around 2630. The last buyers were around 2810, but most what's called a point of control, POC, is right around here. This is where most of the buyers and sellers agreed in this auction market that this price at this point of time, in this case, November 2018, was a ride around, let's say, 2720, right, for the S&P 500. So that's why, uh, you know, that's why I personally like these charts, because, you know, if you have a bit of a statistical background, you're going to love this. It makes sense. So let's uh, take a time machine. Let's go back 60 years. I think uh, uh, J uh, back in the the, the days J.P. Settlemeyer designed this, he was a pit trader, right? There were no computers. People were just using, you know, hand signals, and they had the little, you know, no, uh, notebooks to, to little pieces of paper to, to buy and sell their orders. So imagine this is this is a monthly chart, uh, monthly profile. I mean, with each letter represents one one trading day. So it's about let's say 20 uh, letters uh, as a 20 uh, you know uh, trading days in a month, but uh, imagine this is instead a daily profile and each letter let's say is five minutes or a minute doesn't really matter but anyways he uh, JP has been you know steadily writing down every you know all the prices as it's, as it's moving up and down some scale let's say it's uh, uh, soybeans and and he's here midday and this is the, the the profile he has let's say he's right here he's midday and uh, he looks around the markets and he sees, you know, he's looking to see, are there any, you know, uh, sellers? Is there a big selling order? Is there like a, 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 a drought coming in or something that would move the markets lower? He looks around, he sees nothing. Well, if he's here and he sees everything is normal, it's boring at this point, he can, you know, safely buy down here 
and uh, you know, and because he knows a market that kind of reversion, reversion, reversion to the mean was probably going to go back to this level. So if he bought contracts here, there's a high probability he'll be able to dump them right around here and make a profit. Same thing. Imagine he's up here. It's you know midday, and there's no like you know a big selling or a big buying order like a country that wants to buy all the soybeans in the world. There's not, none of that going on. It's boring. Uh, he could then start selling right around here. There's no more buyers. He sells because he has a high probability that the price will go back down to here. And there's plenty of other methods. Right? I'm just showing you the very the basic one. Uh, J.P. Selenmeyer has a bunch of books. There's uh, Dalton is another guy who wrote books on this. Plenty of information on this type of charting. And of course, this is very basic, right? This is 30 lines of Python. Uh, if you're interested in, in this method, and I think it's a good method, uh, you know, most trading platforms today have market profiles, way better ones where you can do some very complicated things. But in a nutshell, uh, you know, here is the month of November uh, 2018. And when you have a good idea of where, you know, most of the buyers and sellers agreed upon right here. So then, you know, uh, from one month to the next, it goes to uh, December. And you can see the price opened up around A. So it opened high. It tried to look for buyers. There were none. And it starts exploring downwards. And this month, November, went traveled a lot. It went down and went up. Up. Uh, so it doesn't always form a beautiful distribution. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's something like this. Or in this case, it's interesting, right? In um, in uh, December, uh, uh, it was very long, and January kind of formed the distribution, right? Uh, the the regular, the, the normal normal distribution of of price action. So you could say probably you know there were some buyers and sellers agreeing here, but eventually, uh, come you know February and March. Uh, the, the price has rallied up, right? And what's interesting also is is over time, right? You can see this this very strong point of control uh, had lasting effects, right? Because you can look here. What month is this? This is uh, March. In March, uh, the markets tried to look for uh, sellers below uh, 2720. They couldn't. And you could have gotten this hint by looking at, you know, the past market profiles and see, wait a minute, there was a lot of buyer and sellers. This is going to be a strong support point. Who knows if that's the case or not, but you know there's going to be something going on and you definitely want to pay attention. And that's what the market profile is all about. So uh, you can do uh, uh, in weekly, you can do monthly, daily. I'll show you how that works afterwards. Let's first go through the code and then I'll show you how uh, this works uh, and how you can, you know, uh, you know, tweak it for different needs. So uh, what's cool about this is very simple. Uh, the trickery really was just kind of displaying using fixed size font and displaying it properly. Everything else was super, super basic. It It is designed to use uh, Yahoo Finance. So uh, because I'm, 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 I'm using the high and low in Yahoo Finance. So Yahoo Finance is, you know, as usual, is finance.yahoo.com. You put the symbol you want. In this case, let's say you want the S&P 500. It's carat GSPC. This is the one I always use. Uh, it's the barometer of the world, and and you it, it will uh, you know it, it, you you click the the S &P, the historical tab, then you click the date range right here, and you go max, done apply and download and I'll download a, a, a CSV a uh, huge CSV with you know as you can look at the, the, the date range from 1950 to today so a lot of data containing the date open high low close and adjusted close and volume and that's all going to be on your local machine so make sure you know you, you put that in the same folder as where you're running the Jupyter notebook uh, so uh, so you, you pass it this this in this case you know we're looking at the S&P 500 but it can be anything you get from Yahoo Finance and you give it a height precision and I'll show you how that works it kind of allows it to have uh, you know the what kind of a rounding you're going to use. Uh, and it's important because some, some big numbers you're going to need to, to kind of shorten them. Uh, very small numbers you're going to have to need to make them bigger uh, to, 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 to make it an, an interesting display. And I'll show you how that works. And the frequency. This is a time grouper. You can do monthly for M, weekly, or daily. And you can do, you know, uh, like for example, if you want two months uh, profiles, you can do 2M. I'll show you how that works. So uh, the code is simple. Uh, we start off by taking the uh, market uh, data frame. In this case, let's, let's imagine the S&P 500. We find out what is the highest uh, uh, point with the height precision, the multiplier we apply, and the lowest. So we know the upper and lower bound of our data. And, you know, we store that. Uh, then we... Uh, we um, uh, we, we also uh, create the, uh, the time grouper. This is important. This is a really cool function. Let's say you're doing monthly, monthly data. Well, we're going to take that daily data and create it into monthly chunks by using uh, the time groups. Uh, so simply by calling, you know, group by, time grouper, in this case, monthly, take the adjusted close and create the mean of that. And now we have a monthly price, basically. Um, 
Let's see what else we do here. We are cr going to create, this is an important part. We're going to create a master dictionary. And this is basically going to hold all the strings for all our data for the display. So we are basically going to create this huge uh, uh, in-memory uh, dictionary with all sorts of strings that we're then going to dump and print. Uh, but we first have to kind of, you know, uh, 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 fill them up with the correct data. So we have our high and low. So we know uh, we can then build our an empty grid full of basically full of strings with 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 uh, there will be no values except tabs so uh, we go from the in this case the, the minimum price to the highest price we loop through both and we create this dictionary with tabs so now we have basically a full chart like this with nothing but tabs but uh, a price and tabs with no data then we need to fill each each line with the data now, so now we have that all ready to go. It's all blank. Now we're going to loop through the data, basically each data point we have, and we are going to first check, is this one profile or is it a new profile? If it's, if it's not the new profile, it's just a, the, you know, the regular profile, we're still building it, then you loop it, you loop through it, and we're going to take the minimum price and the maximum price for that profile, and we are going to add uh, a character. So we start our character base is 64, which is capital A, and we're going to, uh, sorry, this is a character before char uh, character, I, I forget what it is, but then we add a plus one. So we have A, B, C, right? So every time we need to, we add to our uh, dictionary with these strings, uh, we add a character. So we'll have A, we'll have B, C appended to it, right? This this is kind of, so it's a bit complicated. Uh, it took me a long time to get this part working, but now it works, you know, uh, you can use it the way it is. And if we are in a new profile, then we have to reset things, right? So this is one, okay, move to the next, reset it back to an A, right? Add the tabs because we're now moving from one column to the next column. We don't know what size it is until it's filled with all this data because you can have a, a very long month where all the price never moved. So it's going to be a very long line or if it's a very uh, uh, a very wide, then it's going to be thin, but very from, one, from, from a very low price to a very high price where it could stick to one price and be very long, right? So that's how it, we can arrange this by building it dynamically and that's it really and then once you're done we simply loop through everything we've created in our um, in our uh, in our dictionary right we're sorting it so, so we have to reverse it because we're actually going from minimum price to maximum price and we want it from the bottom to be minimum and, and the top maximum that's just the way uh, it's done so we, we flip it and then we print line by line by using this, you know, by and dividing it by the the the, the height precision, uh, uh, you know, uh, and then adding the tabs, etc. Right. So so a bit a bit, you know, kind of go through the code. Uh, a lot of work went into this, and uh, it was a bit. Um, uh, you know, it's a bit of a pain, uh, but what now is done, it's hidden in, the, in, in, a, um, in a function, we can use it. So how does it use it? So um, this is actually the easy part. So let's, I'm loading the GSPC here. So this is what we just downloaded uh, from uh, Yahoo Finance. And you can check, make sure you got the data. And this, it looks exactly like you, the data we had here, right? So that looks good. And then I'm going to set a height precision. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.1, point 0 0.1. That looks good for the S&P 500. You could do, for example, 0 0.01 and look at the difference. It's very short, right? So this is not useful. You could try uh, 0 0.05. You'll have a little bit more. Or you could make it very long by 0 0.01. And uh, actually, no, sorry, 0 0.1, I meant and you make it a little longer, right? Depending on what, how we want to see it. If you put it one, it means $1 uh, to $1, then it's just unusable, right? It's super, super long. I keep scrolling. Basically, it's, as you can see, it goes from $1 to the next 2063, 2664, 2660. It's, it's too big. So that's why you have to kind of cut it up. And uh, if you cut it up, let's say here, let's go 0 0.1. And we basically move by tenths, right? So 2920 to 2930, 2940, and it's a lot easier to see. And some of them you have to uh, to play around. Let's go. Let's go with soybeans, right? Which I did. I, did, I loaded up recently, and you can see it's not in the 2000. This one trades in the fifth, you know, in the teens. So uh, uh, if if I if I plot it like this, it's not going to be usable, right? It's way too small. So here you have to maybe make it a 10. Let's say a 10, for example. 
And there you can see, right? And you can see it's 10 cents. It moves 1640, 1650, 16. And then you can see. And here we can see the price of soybeans through time. And it's definitely a little bit more controlled, right? But we can see there was definitely some strong buying here. It explored above. And now, uh, you know, it couldn't find much buying. So now it kind of fell underneath right here. And we're, we're exploring this area. So this is monthly. You can also do weekly. So I could just simply change this to W. And the problem you're gonna see, because Jupiter kind of limits the width that we can show, it's not gonna look good. It's gonna be all over the place, right? So you have to uh, say, for example, um, because you have, you can probably see maybe, maybe uh, 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 I'd say five to 10 columns of data, depending on the market action. So let's move this to uh, zero to February of this year. Uh, it's still too big. Let's move it to March. Okay, no, 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 let's move it to, let's try this. Okay, so here we're seeing just a few weeks. I think I could uh, maybe move it a little bit more. There. So here we have April, so we're looking at weekly. So these are weekly columns, as you can see. And now you're looking at the data uh, and, and it's price based for a week. And you can do daily, of course. So if you want to see this uh, 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 better formatted, uh, I would recommend not doing it in Jupyter Notebook. Just kind of break it down into, uh, you know, just open a terminal window and open up an IPython uh, session. And then you'll have, when it printed out, you'll be able to kind of regulate the width uh, uh, better, right? Here we're kind of limited really to, to between five and 10 columns, depending on the price action. But it still gives you a good idea of where, you know, uh, the upper bound, the lower bound of the day are. And you can see this is kind of small. I think we can maybe um, try dollars, a dollar scale. No. Uh, okay, here. If you want to see a little bit better, well, that's really, that's not good. Let me just try 50. And here, right, we're going, basically, we're going by two cents in this case. Uh, but you get to see a little bit more where, you know, where some of the buying is. Uh, you got to, you know, basically, a lot of tools to kind of regulate where you want to see up and down uh, and lower. So uh, frequency daily, monthly, uh, yearly, right? You can do anything you want. You can do a yearly, and that's not going to look good because... Uh, let's see, put a couple of years here. Oh yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Let's leave it to monthly. Uh, let's see what do we have here. Yearly puts too many characters in it. And monthly 2008. There. But it's just to uh, shorten it a bit there and when it starts getting messy here that means that you need to kind of remove there's just it just can't handle that many that many columns so let's go to zero seven still too many let's go to 10 to 11 there all right so you really have your limited amount of, of, of profiles you can get. But that, this is it, right? So um, if you like this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of uh, uh, look at data through fundamentals, through so looking at fundamentals, uh, fundamental indicators, or ways of charting data in different ways, I recommend, you know, um, I like to plug my book at the end of the show, uh, the little book of fundamental indicators, where we go through things. Uh, we don't go through the market profile, that'll be for a, a second edition. But in here we go through very fundamental, very important uh, data points like uh, the, the spiders, the, the SPY, the S&P 500, which is the barometer of the world. Um, I think over 80% of, of, of the value traded represents all the, the traded value in the US. Uh, and uh, like 30% of that, uh, of the money from the S&P 500 com companies come from uh, uh, outside the United States. So it's also kind of not only the US, but also uh, the international uh, heartbeat, economic heartbeat of the world. We look at the VIX, the fear index, we look at the CPI, we look at the, uh, the Case-Shiller index for real estate, we look at uh, uh, unemployment numbers, a huge amount of, 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 of very important fundamental numbers that's going to allow you to know where you are to answer your own questions. We all do it in Python with hands-on. Each chapter has a Jupyter Notebook, which will help you, uh, you know, kind of learn how to answer your own question. This is what it's all about is, you know, understanding your, your uh, you know, giving you the, the data sources, pointing you to the right data sources and the right tools to look at the data and come up with your own decisions uh, and, and, and help you understand uh, for yourself what's going on in the markets today. Thanks for watching. Thank you.